grand opening, grand closing. Welcome, my friends, my family, and my fellow gamers. It's your only friend, these YouTube streets, Portal Rock 77. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoy it. If you're new to the channel, you know, subscribe, hit the like button. You know, got a podcast, 60 Frames No Lag, um, every Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Hope you show up. But, hey, I just want to, you know, just that little quick bit. But let's get into this. So, is console gaming dying? Meaning, are, are as generations you know, new generations come, you know, from the boomers to Gen X to millennials, um, Gen Z, and now with the approaching Gen Alpha, you know, is there less interest in uh, console gaming, you know, has tablets, you know, mobile devices and PC taken over? Well, I'm about to show you this right here. Um, this is uh, 2024 is essential facts about the U.S. video game history. Now, this is specific to the U.S., but, you know, it's pretty close with the rest of the world with the major markets. It's not too far off, you know, maybe certain countries and stuff, but U.S. is, is so big, you could say it's more regional, right? And this is from the Elec Entertainment Software Association, right? So we're going to skim through here. We're going to talk about a few things here, but um, you got this is the... You know pretty much the topics you know stuff like that um this is stanley pierre louise you know president chief executive officer of entertainment software um he goes on a spiel but i want to read one of the couple of bold points i'm uh i know you guys probably can't barely read it these bold points so i just want to hit them up the first bold point is 190.6 million americans play video games weekly uh about at least an hour a week um, 20 years ago, the average video game player was 29 years old. Today, the average player is 36. 78% um, of players now play on mobile devices. Today, everyone can be a gamer. In 1999, only 18% of players reported playing online. Today, nearly 90% enjoy some form of online gameplay. So that's just some some stuff right there. Um, this right here is pretty much the you know U.S. demographic who plays. As you can see, it says on the far left, uh, Americans age from five to ninety who play video games. There's 190. Uh, 0.6 million, so 190 million, all right? 61% uh, of the U.S. population reports playing video games one plus hour a week, so at least one hour a week, 61% of the population plays video games. Um, to the right, you see those two bars. So the light orange is 2004. The red is 2024, so 10 years apart. So we'll talk about um, t um, 2004, the orange. So under 18, 34%. Um, so this is the total population. So the total population broken down by age, 34% in 2004 were under 18. 46% um, was between the ages of 18 and 50. And... 50 years or older, 17%, all right? So I want to make sure you guys understand. So this is the breakdown by ages for the entire population in 2004. 34% of the population were under 18. 46% were between the ages of 18 and 50. And 17% were 50 or older. Now you fast forward 10 years later, 2024, um, the population of gamers, so that's the 190.6 million gamers today, 24% of that number is under 18 years old so less than 18 years old um 47 percent of that 190 million is between the ages of 18 through 50 and here right the 190 million 29 percent are 50 plus right so out of the 190 million people playing uh 29 percent are, are are old fucks you know are old as shit what's what, what's what i mean yo how, how much is that let me do this right now i'll do the math for you 190 million times what 0.29 that's 55 million geezers out there smoking ya yo you let these old bastards run your online you got geriatric gamers up in here killing ya up in here Oh shit, no wonder they had grandpa in that battlefield clips and TikTok sniping everybody. Yo, you let the you let the boomers come in and giving y'all boom. Oh shit, that shit is crazy. Yo, the fucking Silver Centrum clan is up in here. Oh shit. These guys get sponsored by Geritol. Oh my god. Yo, yo, shit. Hey, is is ARP now supporting the next E3 and shit? Yo, that shit is crazy. Yo, and you, damn, that's wild. I'm just saying, hey, but good good on the old dudes. 55 plus, do your thing, man. You know? Um, and like I said before, uh, 
in 2004, the average player age was 29, and now it's 36. Oh shit, we we getting old, you know, shit's getting old, man. We out here council one two no one the there's a lot of more old motherfuckers council one. We we still in the fight. Now, all right, this is this is this is gonna <laughs> this is for you woke anti woke crowd right here. But it says games are inclusive and foster a sense of belonging. Players fifty it says uh fifty three percent male. So all the way to the right with a circle, you see that half blue, half red circle. Fifty three percent the players are fifty percent. Fifty three percent are male. Forty six percent are female. Now there's a little statement like 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 right over here. Like you see where my little arrow right here, right here, my little arrow right there. You probably can't read it, right? That little thing right there. It says one percent selected, nine bar nine binary, or prefer not to say. So there's a little smidgen, all right? Um, eleven percent in that group identify as LGBT, lesbian, gay, bi, or trans. Um, let's talk about right here. So to the right, right over here, we'll talk about you know what the numbers at. Let's see, LGBT. So that's lesbian, gay, bi, or trans self identification players. We're gonna start all the way to the right. We're gonna start with the boomers. All right, so the boomer population, the silent generation, you know, the the real old dudes, you know, the 50 plus, right? Um, 6% say yes, they're LGBT, 93% no, and 1% is just don't want to answer, right? Okay, all right, then Gen X, all right, it, so for yes, it went up to 9%, um, 89% said no, and 2% didn't want to answer. Then we move over further to the millennials. It jumped up to 12%, right? No say 83% and 4% didn't want to answer. And now we got Gen Z, a whopping 17% identify LGBT. No says 77% and 6% didn't answer. So as the newer generation keep coming, it seems like they get gayer. You know, it, it is. Listen, man, it's all love, man. Jesus loves everybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here. To, I'm not here to to hurt nobody. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? We we let's just keep it gaming. Um, ethnicity of adult players: seventy five percent are white and Caucasian, which naturally, right? Uh, America, uh, uh, majority of the citizens are white. Okay. Now this is why this is where I get confused a little bit, but I mean I get it, right? Um Hispanic. That means us Latino is actually Latino, not sp Hispanic, but Latino. Oh, but anyway, okay, got it. Um 19%. Um Black African American 12%, Native American Alaskan 3%, and Asian Pacific Islander 4%. Now I'm going to tell you this is where the whole Hispanic thing comes into play, right? So let me explain something. So his Latinos is not a race. It's not it's an ethnicity, right? So you can be black Latino or white Latino, or you could be white non like That's why, so when they put in that uh, Hispanic 19%, it's kind of weird because within that 19%, you could be, you could identify as white and black as a race, right? Latino's more of an ethnicity, right? Uh, nationalities, obviously, what region you're in, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Mexico, Venezuela, Ecuador, stuff like that. But as a race, an actual race, Latino is not a race. It's an ethnicity. The races, uh, you know what? Never mind. The comment section is just going to go wild now. Now I'm going to get a bunch of Puerto Ricans saying, we're a race. We, ugh, never mind. I, you know what? I might as well just delete this part. But I'm, I'm going to just keep going. All right. Um. Right here, it says, all right, let's move on to the next. Oh, let's go right here. Gender by generation. So we'll go back to the silent generation. So this is, you know, the percentage of split between um, of uh, male, female, right? No, it's a generation hours. Okay, no, this is hours by week. I'm sorry. It says gender by generation, play video games one hour per week. All right. Male. Oh, yeah, it is male, female. Blue is male. Red is female. So the silent generation, 29% of men during the silent generation said they play one hour per week, which makes sense, right? Because the motherfuckers are too busy working. They stay working, right? The silent generation, they stay working. They 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 live for working, right? And then 30% of females, you know, play at least one hour a week. All right. Now we move on to the boomers. It went up. You know, and I, and that kind of makes sense, right? P you know, I see that, right? Because boomers are probably not as geriatric as the silent generation, so they're probably more active, whatever. But forty-four percent of the boomers, males, say, "Hey, we play games one hour, at least one hour per week or more," and fifty percent. So half the women from the boomer generation be doing their thing. Okay, yo, grandma getting it in, bro. Yo, granny, granny not playing. 
Granny said you want you could catch these you could catch these hands one hour a week. I got Granny's like I got time. You know what I'm saying? Oh shit, she out there baking scones and whooping your ass in Team Deathmatch. Yo, Grandma, what's going on here? All right. And then you got the Gen X generation, right? Uh, fifty nine percent of Gen X males spend one hour or more, or, you know, um, you know, playing games and stuff like that. Okay. And the females drop to forty eight. Okay. All right. And then the millennials, woo, seventy four percent of the men in the millennials spend at least one hour or more, and fifty seven percent of the females. All right. And then the Gen Z. All right. Gen Z is eighty two percent up here. All right, the males and 68% is the females and the gen alpha 82% all right of the males play one hour a week and 76 you know gen alpha hey, ain't gen alpha like five years old and shit y'all already like god damn you dudes are like six years old you playing that much video games y'all better read some sesame street or some shit y'all gonna be dumb as fuck what the hell is wrong with you and stuff like that like what you know, but yo, it's crazy. Like Gen X and below is like not even in the sixties. It was like we're about to break sixty, but we're like fifty or less. But the millennials they boost up to seventy. They're like in the seventies and eighties and shit. So why is Gen X and below so low? Because we too busy on Twitter council warring. Us old fucks. Like, what are we doing here, bro? Get up in there and play some games. Nah, I'm just playing, man. Let's see. We'll see the next thing. All right, the benefits of video games. All right, this is where they get touchy feely. I mean, I, we know the stats. It's to relax, to enjoy fun. You know, maybe, you know, maybe somebody goes online to say racist shit. Who knows? But anyway, let's go to the next one. Positive sentiment towards video games. Uh, let's see what it says. Playing video games is a great way to socialize and maintain relationships. Uh, well, the boomer says 21%. They agree with that. Gen X says 46. Millennials says 66. They agree with that. Gen Z says 71%. Um, let's see. The second question. I'm more interested in video games today than I was a year ago. Boomers, 21% agree. I guess, is that, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. The agree, 35% agree. For the Gen X, 51%. For the millennials, 56% for the Gen Z. Let's see. I would rather play video games and watch a movie. 14% of boomers agree to that statement. That means the majority of boomers rather watch a movie. Gen X, 33% said yes. They rather play a video game than a movie. I'm, I'm that dude. I'm that dude. I'd, I'd rather watch. Uh, I'd rather play a game than watch a movie, especially now. Millennials, fifty-five percent. So that so the majority of millennials rather play video games than watch movies. And Gen Z, wow, sixty-three percent rather watch a movie than play a video game. That shit is impactful. That shit's like you could technically say that gaming is like the number one form of entertainment now. Wow. That's interesting, right? Uh, hmm. You know. I mean, the, and you and that and uh, 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 you. With, with things like Netflix and all that, you think that wouldn't be happening because technically now, movies and TV shows are more accessible than ever. Like, you know, like, all right, the boomer and the Gen X generation, right? I'm Gen X. You got the boomers. Listen, we like, I was around when there was no cable. And when cable first came out, it was just HBO. And I think they called it something else. But anyway, it was just like one channel, whatever, right? You didn't have cable. You had to go watch TV and you had to lower the other. Go click, 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 click. You only had like 10 channels and shit like that, right? So, you know, movies and stuff wasn't really accessible. Then when the VCR started popular, oh, that was the shit. And then Blockbuster came out. We used to have the mom and pop video stores and, you know. But now Gen Z, like, like, like movies being shoved down your throat, you know. But not, maybe, the, maybe it's the lack of quality, I guess. There's a lot of shitty TV shows, man. I don't know. It's crazy. What's this? Games is for everyone. All right, so they're talking about their favorite breakdown. Now, this is this this right here is a good one. This is right here. Go. I need you to pay attention to the top right corner, right? Let me let me this right here. You see where my little arrow? If you can see it right here, yeah. Let's pay attention to this, okay? This is the top right. That's what we're gonna go with, right? So you got four colors. Orange is mobile. Light blue is PC. The darker blue it might it might look black to you depending on your screen, whatever. That's that's um console, and then the purple is um virtual reality right we're gonna start all the way to the right again we're gonna start to the right of the screen right here all right and the reason why because this is where the boomer generation so we're gonna go from right to left right so from the right side um this is gaming platforms played by generation so this is what they are playing right and how you know now i wanna i wanna explain something because this might be confusing you're gonna see the numbers they are not meant to add up to 100 so like for example this right here where's orange it says 79 percent 
Then the next one says 43%, the next one 7 and then 2%, right? That That's obviously higher than 100%. No, no, no. So the reason why is the collective group that they got this data from, they get to answer the same question twice. It's not like, you know, if, if like, for example, you go to the boomer group and you'd be like, hey, how many of you play on PC? And they raise their hands. All right, put your hands down. How many of you play on, you know, um, console? They can raise their hand again. So you understand why? So, okay, just to make sure. So don't be confused on the fact that this is over 100%. That's not what it is. So some of these people have more than one platform. Okay, so that's why the numbers are. So anyway, so boomers, 79% of the boomers play on mobile. Right, so that's, the, you know, that's the platform that the majority of them owned. 43% play on pc right so they also they have a pc so some of them might have a pc and a mobile phone but just 43 percent of the group have pc only seven percent have a console so the boomers don't really fuck with consoles like that very small right very small so i guess they're not console warring right because they, they don't even got a console all right so we know the boomers and the silent generation aren't there you know console warring. all right um, and then 2%, you know, barely use virtual reality, right? Now we're going to move over to the Gen X, right? So Gen X, 81% got mobile, right? So tablets and phones, 39% got PC, 35% got consoles. So that's a big jump from generation to generation, which makes sense, right? Because I think like, like granted, boomers and silent generation had, you know, console really old ones. But to me, the Gen X generation, like, like, let me, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me bring my face here, right? Gen X generation, my generation, we the ones that, that, that got introduced with the console that really made it big, like the Atari, right? You know, the Nintendo Entertainment System. You know, those were the big influences. And I think, you know, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis. And I think because of those consoles, that's where you see the huge jump from PC, you know, to console. Okay, so let me go back to that screen real quick. Um, all right, so 35% console, so huge jump, you know. Um, and then 8% for virtual reality. So, you know, not, not too bad, you know. Okay. Now, the millennials, this is where it gets interesting, right? Because everybody talking about generational shift and what platforms they play and whatever, okay? So, millennials, 78%, you know, play on phones. So, that's kind of a little drop, but not too significant, right? 48% play on PC. This is the millennials. 55% play on consoles. So, consoles got a huge jump within the millennials. And I think this is what? Maybe like the playstation you know the xbox 360 the playstation 4 maybe playstation 2 type shit right and then 18 percent, you know play on vr so so this little group got a nice big bump across the board now we're gonna go to the gen alpha gen z right here okay gen alpha gen z 77 percent play on phone so it's dropping not significant but it is dropping right 54 percent play on pc so that bumped up 58% play on consoles. 58% play on consoles. That's the biggest. So the Gen Z, Gen Alpha group, they're the ones playing on consoles the most, more than anybody else. Gen Z, Gen Alpha, right? That group has the higher percentage of people who play on console. More than, definitely more than my group. My group is 35%. Fuck going on here? Gen Z, Gen Alpha, they like their consoles. So what that is Phil talking about? What is all this stuff about, oh, nobody likes consoles? What are we doing here? Right? And then 16% with VR. So that number kind of dropped between from millennials to Gen Z, Gen Alpha. So, like... As 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 gen, as boomers listen. So as boomers, as more and more boomers hit the grave, as my group start hitting the grave, right? The majority of the people left over, and then we're gonna have Gen Bravo, Gen Charlie, whatever the hell, right? The majority of those are gonna be playing a lot of consoles. So I I don't know. That 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 just just I don't know. This is just weird. It says right here, Gen Alpha and Gen Z are the biggest users of PC fifty four and consoles for gameplay. All right. Gaming platforms played by gender. This is on the bottom right. For mobile, majority of females win it, right? 84% of females uh, play on, you know, mobile. 78, 74% is males. 
Uh, PC, 53% male, 40% female. Console, 53, 51% male, 33% female. And then virtual reality, 16% male, 8% female. All right. Okay. So, I don't know about this whole console 9 stuff. This is, all right, this right here is the platform crossover. 78% of U.S. households have played at least one gaming device in the past 12 months. So, if you look at it, right, I don't know if you guys understand this chart, right? So, let me help you out. For those of you who never seen this type of graph, right? For This is for those who don't understand. So, the solid blue represents console. The solid orange is mobile. And the top part is PC, right? When there's no bleed over, this is the number for that thing. So, for example, console is what? 8% uh, platform. So, in this, for example, there's just people who play on console and only console out of everybody is only 8%. People who play on mobile and only mobile is 31%. And people who play on PC and only PC is 9%. Now, let's look at this one right here, right? People who play on PC and console is 4%. People who play on mobile and PC is 16%. People who play on mobile and console is 12%. So, let's look at console. We'll talk about the console gamers, right? Because, you know, stuff like that. There are more console crossover between mobile and console than mobile and PC. I mean, console and PC. Console and PC is actually pretty small. It's only 4%, right? So at least in the US, and which is... Hmm. Hmm. So there's only, in the US, all the gamers, only 4% of the 190 play on PC and consoles. Right, and that means it could be PC and Switch, PC and PlayStation, or PC and Xbox, or any combination of those. Right, but it's only four percent. All right. Okay. All right. Um, all three. Okay, so now this right here. Let me go here. So this one right here, where you see nineteen at. This is people who have mobile, PC, and console. All three. That's nineteen percent. So that's a that's a that's a pretty high number. In fact, that's the highest number. That means there are the majority of gamers that are multi-platform all have PC, console, and mobile. They play on all that. All right. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Um, gaming devices played among individual players, 78% mobile, 47% PC, 43% console, 12% virtual reality. Platforms played among U.S. households, so this is for the whole household. 67% mobile, 53% PC, 36% console, 12% virtual reality. Um, games bring people together. 88% have played games online. In 1999, only 18% of players reported playing online. So it went from 99 to now, went from 18% to 88%. All right. 74% of the players play with others either online or in person. And 55% of players play with others weekly. So it's a lot of multiplayer. Lots and lots of multiplayer. Who players are playing with? Among 18 plus who play with others, 53% play with their friends. 37% own online only friends 29 percent play with their spouses 24 percent play with their children 23 percent with other family 21 percent with siblings seven percent with their parents ain't nobody trying to play with your mom and shit like get out of here after you play the game you know you whoop her ass now she's gonna make you clean your room ain't nobody trying to hear that well nah they'll be so losers dad come in with the bell and whoop your ass talking shit online you know what I'm saying? And and if you play with your mom, you know, your mama jokes don't hit. You can't really do mama jokes when it's your mom on the other end. Nah, you can't be doing that. Nah, you can't be doing that. Nah, that's not how it is. Um, let's see. When it comes to staying connected players, 73% say agree that playing games can introduce people to new friends. Yeah, you can also get suckered out of your money, but hey, uh, we ain't going to talk about that. Fifty-three percent agree that playing games has helped them make lasting memories, like getting ripped off from people who conned you out of your money. Forty-eight 
48% say they have met people through video games that otherwise wouldn't have met. Yeah, especially those that rip you off out of your money. And 39% say agree they have met a good friend, spouse, or significant other through video games. And you also met that dude that ripped off your money. All right. <laughs> What's the next one here? Games help forge family bonds. 72% of parents play video games. Of parents who play, 83% video play with their children. Man, that's pretty cool. 51% play with their kids at least weekly. All right. Uh, parents love games uh, for their kids because their kids enjoy them. Video games are a form of entertainment. Parents like playing with their kids. All right. You know so? But the question is, do you counsel war with your kids? That's when you hit the level, bro. You know what I'm saying? They got to fight. You know what I'm saying? Pick a side. Rip that flag. You know what I'm saying? Um, here we go. Parents are in the driver's seat. Uh, age content rating Alright yeah But you know They just want to block Jeff. Got it Okay In The business of games 63% of players say Video games offer the most value For the money Followed by 46% for video streaming services 31% movies 44% music 30% books Magazines and news Top 4 types of In-game content purchases Number 1 is In-game currency Number two, expansion packs. Number three, skins and customization items. And four, season battle pass. These dudes love buying this bullshit. See, this is why. See, this, this, this is why we get screwed over. Look at this. They be buying all this shit. Damn. All right. Top sources of info when considering purchasing a new game. This is a percentage of 18 and plus. 54, 54% said they read or watch player user reviews. Uh-oh. They be watching them video review bombs and shit. User bombs and shit. Oh, man. They watch official trailers and promos, 54%. So the trailers and promos have as much, or the player user reviews have as much weight as trailers and promos. Uh, yeah. They ask friends or family for opinions, 51%. That's not bad. That's not too far off. 50% play a trial version demo if one is available. All right. Search for information on forums or social media. Oh, 49%. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ew. Brother, what's that? Ew. Like, no, 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 no. Don't go to forums or social media. No, 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 no. 49% cut that shit out, bro. Oh, man. Especially if you come on Twitter, bro. You ain't going to like any game when you come to Twitter. All right. All right. Let's see what, let's see, let's see what they finally got here. Is there anything else? Um... Okay, this is interesting, right? Uh, so, 2023, the top grossing console PC full game. So, these are the highest selling games, right? Grossing. The money. Number one, Hogwarts Legacy. Yo. The GOAT. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Madden NFL 24. Marvel Spider-Man 2. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. But those two dots mean... Right here, that digital sales is not included. So technically, it could overtake Spider-Man with digital sales. But is Switch really a big digital purchase type platform? Is it really? I need you guys to let me know. You know, hit up, hit up the comment section. Let me know. Do you see a lot of digital sales on Switch? I mean, it's possible. It's there. But we'll see. Um, Diablo 4. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Damn. Two Call of Duties in the same year. Modern Mortal Kombat 1. Star Wars Jedi Survivor and EA Sports, you know, wait a minute, 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 something's missing, something's missing, am I bugging, am I bugging, isn't there, like, isn't, like, the game of the gen, like, the game of all games, I think, uh, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe, let me know. Let me know if we, we see a certain game missing. I don't see the game of the gen here. I don't, I, I, mean, I don't know, man. It's a, I got a headache, you know, so we're going to move on with that, right? And the top grossing mobile and stuff like that. What I really, and now let me go to this left side. See this chart right here? So this chart is pretty much saying, so when um a certain console device release, um, how much sales in billions did, you know, the, the industry was at? So right here, when the Nintendo DS released, it was like just above 
10 billion and that's like around 2024 then in 2005 when xbox 360 released it was like maybe 12 billion then when the ps3 released and then in the wii u in the wii released 2006 it was like maybe i would say 14 billion then you see that stark increase by the time the ps4 released 2013 the industry was a 25 billion dollar industry in sales and again this is america um then more sales more sales by the time the switch released it's at 35 billion all right so more sales more sales and by the time the ps5 and xbox series x released the industry was at 55 billion now i think this is where everybody's catching a heart attack right if you notice the only time there was a drop between period was the ps3 release because the ps3 if you notice right here i wish i could zoom in right can i zoom in shit i can't zoom in um like like right here this little dot right here is a drop but then it shot back up and then dropped again go back up but right here this was the industry in 2021 was at 60 billion now it went back down to 55 billion and I think this drop right here is what's causing all the, the oh my God, the industry is failing. We got to do something. I think because of 2021, right? 2020, 2021, and everybody's home. They're locked in. They can't go nowhere. So video game became a huge, a huge way for entertainment, right? And that just spiked up a lot of content, a lot of sales up to 60 billion. Well, then as soon as they opened up and the world opened up again, it normalized. But that normalization caused the drop back down to 55 billion. And that's making the industry nervous. And I think, in my opinion, the industry is is getting way ahead of itself. You know, uh, instead, I don't know. I think I think they're reading the thing wrong. But you know, there's better people than me in this one. But I think that's what's attributing the whole all oh, the industry in trouble. That five billion drop from 60 to 55 and this is just the u.s if we were to include the rest of the world which probably did something similar it just multiplied it right so imagine if you know europe had another five billion drop or so that's 10 billion and let's say the pacific region which is even bigger let's say they had a seven billion drop you're potentially talking about 17 billion drop across holistically across the world which is making the industry nervous so now they're they're trying to compensate quickly when in reality it's just the fact that People are not stuck home. So that you got people in 2020, 2021 that really aren't really gamers, but they didn't really have a choice. They were they were going insane. So video games helped them out. But now that you know the world's open again, they're going back to what they really like. And gaming is just not that it. And that's I don't think that's a case of lack of growth or whatever. I think is I think COVID created this unnatural unnatural growth and what i mean by unnatural it included people that aren't gamers it's just included people that you know that was forced to do so it would be like me stuck on an island right i don't eat seafood i think it's disgusting right but if i was stuck on an island for five years my ass would be looking like tom hanks you know spear chucking fishes in the water and eating it raw doesn't mean i like seafood but a motherfucker's gotta do what you gotta do you know what i'm saying you, you gotta do what you gotta do right it is what it is you know and i think that's probably what happened maybe i don't know you know but uh anyway let's let's go let's keep it moving and then these are all the esa members a whole bunch of partner members circana's in there sensor tower um esrb.org the esa right um yeah amazon by that not co-providing data capcom disney electronics are epic konami craft and microsoft corp netflix Next on America, Nintendo of America, Riot Games, Sony Interactive Entertainment, Square Enix, Take Two, uh, Ten Cent. So you got you will be saw Warner Brothers, Wizards of the Coast. You got you got the biggest of the biggest up in here, right? Uh, providing this data, right? So you got you got some big players up in here and stuff like that, right? All right, all right, all right. So what this comes down to? What's this come down to? One, consoles are very popular for millennials and Gen Z and Gen Alpha. Right? There's still some old mofos up in here whooping your ass. Like they are whooping your ass and stuff like that. And not a lot of people like to play with their mama. I guess that's ultimately what we do, right? And also as every generation moves on, they seem to get gayer. I don't know. It listen, man. It's, I love you all, man. You know what I'm saying? We all we all in this together, right? But anyway, I hope you find this interesting. Um I'll post the link 
in the description so you can actually see the source material if you're interested in reading it yourself. But let me know what you think. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I've done something like this. Um, but anyway, shout out to HD Gamer who put me on to this. Truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anyway, let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this, right, stick around, subscribe. Your only friend is YouTube Streets Porter Rock 77. Again, I want to see you on Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 60 Friends No Life Podcast, right? You guys enjoy. You guys take care. Have a good night. Peace. Grand opening, grand closing.